Assalamu Sayyidi. Can this spiritual path lower cognitive ability and how do we cope with this in an academic environment? Thank you, Sayyidi. Lower cognitive ability? Cognitive ability being lower your brain function? Our spiritual path? No, actually the, the concept of genius is what? Gen Genies, right? So when you open up your spiritual ability, you're, you're opening a much more powerful reality that school, this Western system was incorrect. It was based on memorizing. So they now put a system in which memorize. So they take all their knowledges, bring it to the head which has limited capacity and tell kids, memorize, memorize, memorize. And as a result of 40 years of 50 years or 60 years of memorizing, they all got Alzheimer's because they burn the circuits within their head, they put all of their computing within their head where the natural way was Islamic way that you were supposed to actually build your heart and that the heart is the CPU and the head is merely a screen just like the computer that God made you to build for yourself. So the natural way is the CPU. So when you train children to connect with their heart, meditate with their heart, they have TikToks and YouTubes on these children whom they teach like that where they teach them to meditate, teach them to open their heart, they close their eyes they can see things. They can see things in the room, they can see patterns, drawings, they can see what people are writing because they're opening the process of their heart. <coughs> the heart is an infinite Google. So look at who brought you knowledge onto this earth. Well, Christians were in the dark ages, they didn't bring knowledge. They were cracking people's heads when they had a, a headache. Islam brought knowledges. Who were these who were these shaykhs? They were all awliya. Ibn Sina, they were big awliya. Who brought algorithm? Who brought all these maths and scientists? They were all awliya and the students of awliyaullah. Why? Because they made their tafakkur, contemplation. When they would contemplate on the body, these awliyaullah would contemplate, Ya Rabbi what is this anatomy? Allah would make the entire anatomy appear for them in their tafakkur and it would move around like a slideshow for them, come out and begin to describe its function. That this gland is for this and it would speak to them, yeah, advanced technology. That anything they put their heart to would begin to appear to them, describe its reality, what Allah created it for. So now go back and read to Ibn Arabi and Ibn Sina where he oh. describes the bile systems, describes all of the, the capillaries, describes everything. How? You think by ripping human people together they weren't touching anyone. They weren't allowed to, to, to sacrifice people and to go into to teach these anatomies. But Allah was opening for them the, these realities in which it would appear to them. When they studied the sun and the moon it would appear to them, it would show its rotation, show its reality, show its course, its speed, everything because Allah's great. When they were in, in medicine and pharmacy, anywhere they walked in the jungle, the flowers and the bushes would appear to them and say what they were created for, that Allah created us for this and I'm a cure for this or I'm a poison for this, digest me for this. And the garden talks to them, Zaitaqullah wa alimukumullah means Allah will make all His creation to come and to serve you and teach you. So the heart had that capacity. They had no phones and you could contact your relatives. That, oh, I have a sense that somebody's passed away tonight, I have to start journeying back. How? Oh, there was no cell phones. But people were communicating with their hearts. So, it means the power of what God has given to us is diminished when you rely on, on technology because it's a, it's a power you don't use anymore, right? So when you sit and meditate then what happens? The heart opens and the heart has now infinite capacity because we don't meditate in our head, we don't listen to the whisperings in the head. 
you're supposed to play also some sound that's peaceful and beautific for you so that not to think about your problems, not to think about any issues but meditate in which to connect with the power source and to, to get resolution, to get power, not to go into issues and, and over analyze. So when the heart opens has infinite capacity to infinite knowledges. Like we're describing the huruf, they would sit and the huruf comes to them and begins to teach them that we're alif and the alif is for Allah's might and then begin to expand itself. Imagine then the numbers that would come and begin to teach them. Before that the Western world was using Roman numerals. Could you imagine making a computers on X and V's and, and what, I's? It didn't work based on that. All of this technology is based on the nukht, right? Because the nukht became a placeholder in their math. And then their whole numeric systems were born based off of that. Algorithm is all based on that. So all their technology they owe it to Islam. And those were people who were natural in meditating, contemplating and Allah was inspiring their creation. They can make energy, they can make uh, engines, they can make all of this. The pyramids were not uh, sarcophagus, they were not graves and, and tombs, they were power stations. They powered the entire city based on energy, based on water, based on sun. They were made as coils, they were insulated with rocks and limestones and granite and water would flow under the pyramids and the sun would hit the water and it would go under and it would release its electrons under mm -hmm. and the structure of the pyramid would take the energy and then send that out for their services and for whatever they needed. So it means these structures and it's so advancedly built that it can't be destroyed by either a flood or earthquake. Where now we build buildings that fall down. So what was that technology? But by people of the heart and by people of meditation. Now that they use only their head, what did it get them? Alzheimer's, right? Because they fry the circuit of the head, they, they put too much emphasis on their head and by 80 years old the head no longer can take the, the, the energy that they're putting into the circuitry. So Allah describes them like donkeys carrying books because you have to keep all these books with you everywhere you go to remind yourself what you learned. But the alim and those who make tafakkur and contemplate, there's no books for them. What they learn is in their heart. What Allah conveys is within the heart. There's no series of books to put down and say, this book said this and this book said that and you have to take your books with you everywhere you go just in case you forget. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifun wa salaamun al mursaleen Muhammadillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.